Welcome to Intro to Arduino, Module 2, Section 1. What's a data logger? So what is a data logger? For those that don't know, a data logger is an instrument that stores data collected from various sensors and inputs. A temperature data logger would store data from a temperature sensor, and a seismic data logger would store data from seismic activity. The design of a data logger varies depending on its purpose and application. The examples here are fixed data loggers with very specific purposes and features. We're going to design a slightly more general purpose data logger with different types of sensors that can be attached to it. Some sensors require specific interfaces, such as a serial interface, while other sensors use an analog voltage to output their readings. When you're customizing a data logger and choosing sensors, you'll need to look at the interface the sensor requires, whether it outputs an analog or digital signal, and what voltage the sensor works at. Then you'll need to check if the circuit board can handle it. You can also use off-the-shelf hardware modules to extend the functionality of the circuit board, but we'll get into that later. In this case, we'll be writing the software to implement a temperature, humidity, and motion sensing data logger. Temperature and humidity are some of the most standard environmental measurements you can make. For wildlife research, PIR, or passive infrared motion sensors, are often used to detect the presence of warm blood in mammals, so we thought it'd be fitting. Central to a data logger is memory, which is where we log data to. It can be as simple as a few hundred bytes of memory on the main microcontroller, some chip memory, some flash memory on an SD card, or a full solid state drive. No matter what, all of this uses one type of memory, flash memory. As Jacinta mentioned in the previous module, flash memory is a non-volatile memory, i.e. it keeps its data even when powered off, and is the main storage memory used on devices today. Another important component on a data logger is a real-time clock. A real-time clock is a chip that performs the function of a clock and a calendar. Its main purpose is for timestamping data, which means adding the time and date to sensor samples and events. The real-time clock we're using, the PCF8563, has some additional special functions where we can set alarms and use a timer function. This means that we can put the complete system to sleep and just use the real-time clock to wake the system up when a sensor sample needs to be taken. We'll see that this becomes very important if we plan on deploying a system in the field for a long period of time. The sensor provides the data in a data logger. Many data loggers use multiple sensors, and in our case, we'll be using two distinct sensors. A temperature and humidity sensor with digital output that operates at 3.3 volts, and a PIR motion sensor with digital output operating at 5 volts. We'll be using the real-time clock to wake the system up at specific intervals, like every hour, to take a humidity and temperature sensor sample. We'll also use the PIR motion sensor to wake the system up when activity is detected. If some motion is detected, the system will wake up, log that motion event, and add the timestamp as well as the temperature and humidity when it happened. Along with the main features of a data logger, there are invisible features that we need to consider also. These are things that might not be noticed by end users when they're there, but will definitely be noticed if they're missing. These are things like power optimization, which will affect battery or field life. Reliability, which would affect how many times the device might need to be serviced or replaced in the field. We call these truck rolls, as in a service truck needs to be rolled out, where you're the service truck. This can be extremely expensive if devices are located in remote places, like volcanoes. Recovery, in this case, means a graceful recovery from some type of bug or fatal error. These are things where some uncaught bug has occurred that crashed or hung the system, and the system is still able to recover from this. We'll discuss how to implement this as well. And finally, usability. This is especially application-specific, and we'll discuss this briefly, but it will be up to all of you to implement what you think makes the device usable to yourself or whoever will use it. In real life, this could be adding an LCD to display status, making the SD card more accessible, or having indicator LEDs to flash a status. In this submodule, we learn the basic components of what a data logger is. In the next submodule, we'll be installing and configuring the Arduino design environment. Stay tuned for Module 2-2, Setting Up Arduino.